So, popular anti-theist activist Arn Ra posted four days ago at time of writing a clip of a debate he had with a guy named Jake, who I'm not even going to pronounce his last name. Not even going to try. On the subject of the evidence for God, or against in Arn's case. Now, I really like Arn's content. I think he can be a bit brash and, well, a bit childish in his speech about, like, creationist pseudoscience peddlers. But, meh. Fuck him. I think Arn is entertaining. I, you know, I like hearing people dunk on creationists and conservatives. As a far-left doofus myself, much farther left than Arn, to be clear, being an anarcho-communist, dunking on neoliberals is my main pastime. And as something of an anti-theist myself, I throw creationists and other anti-science dorks in there too. Maybe I'm just a messy bitch who loves drama. This all being said, there's a problem I have with Arn's live content, and with most debates in general. Now you might think the purpose of debating is to pit two competing positions or theories against each other, an evenly matched battle to show which side is more or less supported. But that's my problem in regards to Arn's debates. If the purpose of the debate is to lay out the evidence of each point and either show that one is supported more by the facts than the other, or to convince your opponent using these facts, then the two sides of a debate need to be equal. Arn's side has the evidence, and over a century's worth of study, and his opponents? Bubkiss, a book of fictional fables and fantastic folklore, as Arn might say. Arn has been on paleontological digs. He's actually gone to school for the thing he specializes in, evolution. He is, without a doubt, a fantastic science communicator, if not himself an expert. His opponents are frauds and con men looking to spread their faith's power. Dipshit reactionaries trying desperately to cling to Bronze Age traditions, but only the ones that they like and only the interpretations of the ones they like that they approve of. To be clear, Arn's debates are not equal in that regard. No, for the anti-science crowd, the purpose isn't to actually present evidence. The only thing they have are arguments. And arguments are not evidence. Someone gives an argument, it's not evidence that they're playing philosophy war games and defining truth. All other truths in the world that I know of can be demonstrated with experiments or discoveries to show something is true. It's not just words or scripture that's true. It's what they represent. And I'm wondering if there's any evidence you have that can be demonstrated in science, not, not philosophy or Webster dictionaries, just. And certainly arguments over evidence would be acceptable in certain debates, but when the debate subject is the evidence for or against God, evidence is literally in the name. And since the anti-science crowd doesn't have any evidence that isn't from con men and frauds, they've got nothing, and thus have to pretend their argumentation is sufficient when it is woefully insufficient. The only point in debating a creationist is to pants them in front of a live audience. The same reason Benjango Shababadook debates leftists. Only this time, it is actually just you pantsing them instead of you getting pantsed and then pretending like you meant for that to happen. And that actually proves that you're a really smart and special little guy. And your evidence for that assertion, Dean Pole Shamwell, is my mommy says so, and also I can't make my wife come. Dunking on Bean Pole Shababadook aside, the only point in them debating you is to use equivocation and dishonest argumentation they insist is evidence to convince undecided fools in the audience on the fence of whether or not to, to paraphrase Arn's words, remain honest or remain religious. They are there to proselytize and fool people into converting or remaining converted. You are there to show the evidence against their assertions and leave the decision up to the audience. The distinction is small, but extremely important. One side is honest, 
using facts and evidence to back up their position. The other side is using dishonest fallacies and falsehoods to dupe people gullible enough to be duped by such horseshit. One side is operating in good faith, the other is operating in bad faith. There is no point in debating such a person when they are irrationally dishonest and dishonestly irrational. Debating such a person is therefore no debate at all. It just becomes petty bickering and squabbling with one side whining about how they're not being taken seriously and the other side sitting leaned back with all their evidence, arms crossed, bored out of their skull saying, no, no, no. How are you even in this debate when you evidently know nothing about the subject? It's pointless and annoying. But in the case of creationism and religion in general versus atheism and anti-theism, well, Creationists are going to proselytize anyway, anywhere. It is granted good, therefore, to be there to call bullshit. So at least their assertions aren't going unchallenged. But whatever. So while there's not really any point to debating them rather than countering their bullshit, it is still important to counter their bullshit. Digressions and tangents aside, an issue I have with specifically an RN debate is that, well, and no offense to RN, but he's a bit of an impatient ass. You know, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it does make the debates tend to devolve into petty bickering fairly quickly. And observe, glimpse, Chum, these preem scrolls. Here's a clip. The sentence expresses the truth. Once again, the truth is what the facts are, but you can't state what the truth is if you don't know what the facts are. You can't show the truth of it. We're not disagreeing, disagreeing about that. Part. I'm glad. We're, Can we're we get past it? Well, you don't even believe two plus two equals four necessarily. So, what's I, the difference? Oh, I, I fully accept that normally two plus two would be four. Yes, but but there's no way that you can that you can jump to two plus two equals four. Therefore, God. And there was no fact given. Anybody hear a fact in there? Yeah, there are other arguments that uh, I could have presented and I've presented in other venues. Uh, certainly there are arguments, but I didn't present a scientific argument. I presented a philosophical argument. But of course, the purpose of the debate was to present evidence, not arguments. Yeah, and a philosophical argument can be evident. Not on a scientific topic. It's not scientific. The definition I gave, if you were listening in the presentation... Oh, see, it's okay. because you're too stupid. No, because because that's what you're saying to this gentleman here. That's you're not what the I said. Maybe you, you said, you, stupid, you said that he didn't want to listen to your answer. I made an observation that was not what you said. Exactly, that's the same thing. Which is completely I, different, I, that's not. Let me put it on the screen here. This is actually something that he himself has acknowledged in the past, if I remember right that he is quick to be annoyed by dipshits and loses his patience. Something that I can definitely relate to. As a person with ADHD, it's incredibly easy to irritate me by wasting my time or saying some dumb bullshit. My patience is extremely short in general, but especially when it comes to dishonesty, be that refusing to learn or by telling lies. Aaron talks over Jake several times in this 37 minute clip, often making comments during his Q&A or even during his turns in the debate. And it's not that much, but it is enough to be a problem. And this makes Aaron look like he's just being an ass to Jake, making his arguments and him more sympathetic to his audience. Or maybe not his audience, but definitely to a wider audience. Like in my experience, most people in society will just bend over backwards to lick the boots of any religious person, especially if their religion is being questioned. It's taken for granted that you shouldn't question other people's religious beliefs, even if they're the ones trying to force them onto others. Debating with someone who operates in bad faith is delicate. You don't want them to seem more sympathetic, one, because they are counting on their charisma to carry them over the evidence, on the audience's biases to triumph over the audience's honesty. And there is no two, that's it. Because they don't have evidence, the only thing they're relying on is how sympathetic the audience will be to their arguments. 
Those arguments are all they have, and thus intelligence is their dump stat, and they favor charisma. Though in this case, Jake lacks both. Like, Aaron, you really gotta let him speak. Jake is not the most charismatic man anyways, so you really just gotta give him time to hang himself with his own rope, so to speak. Interrupting and berating him so much in this clip again just makes him seem more sympathetic, as if Aaron is just bullying the man, even though Aaron is correct. The urge to call him out is very strong, nigh undeniable, but deny you must for the glory of the Lord or something. And that's really my only gripe with Aaron in this debate, besides something in a question posed to Aaron during the Q&A. And it's not even really that big of a gripe. I mean, he doesn't do it that often. And honestly, Jake is just fucking insufferable. He's just an annoying little guy. I'd make fun of his hat, but that seems insensitive. Also, Jake does it too at several points. So it's not even just an RN thing. It's just a debate thing. It's just a thing I don't like about debates. So one of the members of the audience during the Q&A, who claims to be an atheist, asks Aaron, what is the evidence against God? Here is a clip. I yeah, God is not is even no possible. So what evidence do you have for that? I, I believe I already expressed it. You didn't it. see it. He presented it all night. Where were you? If, if it, God is not even a possibility, as I explained, we don't even have a possibility to consider. We have science that considers what is supported, what is not supported. Where was the support for God? He was supposed to present it. So we are left wanting. That's not evidence against God. No, it, but it's not evidence for God, is there? And that's all that matters. I presented it. We, that nobody saw. No. Plenty of people saw it. Where are you? So I just don't think Aaron properly responded here. It seems to me that either Aaron dodged the question out of frustration, or maybe Aaron misunderstood the question in the first place. And by dodged the question, I just mean didn't feel like answering it again. So he asked Aaron's evidence against a god's existence, saying essentially that we cannot say for absolute certain that there is no god, which technically is true. Scientifically, we cannot prove anything, and since god does not exist, it would be like asking for evidence against dragons, specifically those like Smaug and not the more realistic lizard origin of the western dragon myths. They're fictional creatures invented by people. You can't say anything about dragons, or similarly God, scientifically, because dragons and God are not even possible, as Aaron says. Aaron has pointed out before that science operates in reality, not make-believe. What you can do, however, is point out that the assertion that there is a god, or that there are dragons like Smaug, are both unsupported. Not only is the assertion unsupported and thus baseless, but there is proof in the colloquial usage of the term that such beings are inventions of people. We have evidence that they are invented, and thus not real. And thus, while you cannot say whether or not there is or is not a being that we might call a god or smaug out there for certain, you can say that there is enough evidence against their assertion of their god's truthfulness to call that god fiction. You can then extrapolate that, since the only things even describing or defining a god or dragons, specifically their god or their dragon, are nothing more than fictitious, baseless speculation about something that was made up by people. An assertion made without evidence can be dismissed just as easily. And since every believer's evidence is just baseless speculation and outright falsehoods, it is not unreasonable to therefore say that their god itself is a lie. Because we may not have evidence against a cosmic designer or some shit, we can't say there isn't one necessarily. It would be just as the believers claims baseless speculation and thus lies to assert that there is evidence that there is no, in general, cosmic entity. Until shown to be supported though, the statement is effectively false. In my experience, believers hate nothing more than the burden of proof. 
And that's why they try to redefine what evidence means so that it is no longer a fact that indicates. Because they can't give you any facts, not to point their way. So they give arguments instead of evidence, essentially word games trying to define their God into existence, with erroneous or fallacious assumptions built into most of them. Unsupported equals untrue. So that's just a few issues I had with this clip. I really just wanted to post a comment about it on his video, but it got pretty long and, well, I've always wanted to be rather smug and correct R and, you know, hardy har, I corrected the smarty bands. But, well, I just thought it would be a fun little project to work on overnight after work. So I adapted my comment into the script and expanded on a few points. Hopefully I made my point clear, but I recognize that I kind of suck at talking, so maybe I didn't. Oh well, who cares? It's not like anyone's actually going to listen to this. So if I ever do anything like this again, I'll probably not use the radio voice. It's a little annoying. It's just a little late for me to go back and re-record everything, as I've already done it at this point, and I don't feel like it. So, yeah, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Bye.